In this video, we're working through um, section 3.4, uh, the chain rule, and we're just trying a few exercises. Um, so, for example, number 12, we have sine of e to the t plus e to the sine of t. And you'll notice that uh, to differentiate then, we just take them piece by piece. And um, so here we see that this is a composition, the outside function f of t it would be sine of t and the inside would be e of t. And so the way to differentiate then would be to differentiate the outside function. So we'd have the cosine for the sine. And then remember we're evaluating with the inside function still there. And then you have to multiply that by the inside function. Good. And then we'll add uh, the exponential function now is the outside function and the sine is the inside function. So we uh, exponate the, exponentiate that and leave the inside function there times the uh, derivative of the inside function. Good. <coughs> now number 16 is actually a product. Do we see that? And each of these functions here are uh, compositions. So one way you could write it first if you weren't quite sure leave a little space there. You could say uh, we'll differentiate this one times this one plus the first one times the derivative of the second. And so that just reminds you of what we're doing here. And so now when we differentiate uh, this would be e to the minus 2t times minus 2. Right, and then the cosine of 4t just comes down. And then we'll have our plus e to the minus 2t. And then we'll have our minus sine of 4t times 4. Good. And then we could simplify that a little bit. We could factor out the exponential, for example. Uh, but for now, you could leave your answer in this form. OK, and then uh, number 22. Uh, we have quite a bit going on there. Let's see if we can get through it. Um, so uh, f prime of s is equal to the square root function is the outside function. And so the derivative of that would be, we'd take the 1 half down, right? And then remember the inside function just stays the same. But then you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So the derivative with respect to t of s squared plus 1 divided by s squared plus 4. OK. And so now we would want to differentiate this. Now to remember to differentiate this, we're going to need the quotient rule, right? So the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all divided by the bottom squared. OK, and then you could probably simplify that a little bit. So it's uh, 2s cubed plus 8s minus, remember parentheses, uh, 2s cubed. I thought those 2s cubes would cancel, plus 2s. Oops. And so it looks like the 2s cubes cancel. 8 minus 2 would be 6s. So we would just end up with 6s over s squared plus 4 cubed. And that's just for this term, right? So that term becomes that. Good. All right. Uh, so I'm going to pause and set up the next problem. So going on to another problem. This is uh, problem 62 in 3.4. It says if f of h of x is the square root of 4 plus 3 times f of x, where f of 1 is 7, and f prime of 1 is 4, then find, excuse me, h prime of 1. Well, to do that, we'll take h prime of x first. And notice that this is a composition, right? The outside function is the square root again. So that would be 1 half. That's the derivative of the outside function, right? With the inside function remaining. But then you multiply by the derivative 
of the inside function. Derivative of 4 is 0. Uh, so that would be 0 plus 3 times f prime. Okay, and so this is our derivative. So h prime of 1 looks like will be this 1 half times 4 plus 3 times f of 1, f of 1 being 7, and to the minus 1 half times uh, 3 times f prime of 1, which is 4. Okay, so it looks like that's 12 divided by 2 is 6. Square root 21 plus 4 is 5, so be 25 square root is 5 6 fifths. Good. All right, we'll pause that and take a look at another one. All right, so uh, a little bit of a jump there, but uh, we're taking a look at number 66 now. If f is the function whose graph is shown, let h of x be f of f of x and g of x be f of x squared. Use the graph of f to estimate the value of h prime of 2 and g prime of 2. And then we just have a graph of h, uh, of f. And so um, let's go ahead and uh, go to some paper first, and we'll try to figure out what h prime and g prime are. Then we'll come back to the graph uh, in just a minute. So let's see, how am I going to do this? Can I just do the, uh, how about this way? So if h equals f of f of x, then h prime is going to be f prime of f of x times f prime of x, right? And so what will h prime of 2 be? h prime of 2 will be f prime at f of 2 times f prime of 2. So to continue now, I need f of 2 and f prime of 2. So if we look at the graph, let's see. Uh, f of 2 is here. Uh, it looks like f of 2 is equal to 1. So f of 2 equals 1. And what would you say is uh, f prime of 2? f prime of 2 is pretty close to negative 1, isn't it? I think that's pretty close. Okay, so then uh, we would have this would be equal to f prime of 1, right? Times f prime of negative 2, which is negative 1. Okay, and now what would f prime be? f prime of 1, uh, it is a positive slope, right? Uh, how much is that? Is that about positive 1? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. It's uh, going down, isn't it? It's decreasing, so it would also be negative. Is it close to negative? Uh, it's pretty close to negative 1, isn't it? I think that would be pretty close to negative 1. As an estimate, I might take negative 1 to be the answer there. So then negative 1 times negative 1 would be positive 1. Good. Uh, how about g of x? g is f of x squared. So g prime would be uh, f prime of x squared times 2x. And g prime of 2 would be f prime at 4 times 4. One, two, three, four. Uh, that is definitely steeper than one. It is a positive slope. Uh, I'm going to call it maybe two. <laughs> okay, so that's two times four. Okay, so we have an eight. Okay, so this is just real general, uh, you know, general 
uh, approximation. Notice, by the way, that the problem before, uh, this one would be a lot easier to get derivatives of, right? Because that's where we have some slopes that we can actually work out. And so I think that one is actually assigned. Good. All right. I'll pause and see if there's a short one we can do. Okay, let's do uh, problem 52 real quick. Uh, that seems like a one that we can do. Uh, so we're just finding the equation of a tangent line to the curve at the point. So that's pretty straightforward about what we have to do, right? Um, if our function is y equals the square root of 1 plus x is that a cube, 1 plus x cubed, and we're at the point 2, 3, uh, then uh, to find the slope, right, the slope is, the, or to find the tangent line, we have the point that the line goes through, we just need a slope, and the slope will be computed from the derivative. So the outside function is the square root function again. Gosh, we've get, gotten a lot of square root functions. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is just be 3x squared in this case. Okay, so then if I plug in the point 2, I would have 1 half times 1 plus 4, oops, 1 plus 8, to the minus 1 half, and then 3 times 4. Uh, the 2 would cancel with that 2, so I'd have 6 over 8 plus 1 is 9, square root of 9, 6 over 3 is 2. Good, so now I have a point and a slope, and now I can just write down my equation. 2 times x minus 2. Good. There it is. All right. Uh, so that was some exercises from section 3.4.